Well, that is the story that Noel is a Tory. Now, I'm not one of those who rubbish Oasis. I liked Oasis, and I liked Noel Gallagher. There you go. I've met him in this very building when he was doing some work for Talk Sport. I don't agree that Oasis were some kind of Beatles tribute act, even less a Slade tribute act. I thought that they were an authentic, northern, working-class voice. I liked that era where they were cock of the walk, cock of the north. And I thought Noel Gallagher was a little bit extreme left, actually. Back in 1995, when he was shouting, Power to the people! When he was calling for the Queen, cover your ears, ma'am, to be beheaded, I thought that's a bit over the top, Noel. So imagine my surprise and disappointment when I awoke to the national news. First broadcast on NME, the new musical express, that Noel Gallagher had become a Tory, joining that distinguished phalanx of great artistic talent for the Tories, Vince Hill, Jimmy Tarbuck, Lulu, and now Noel Gallagher. But he didn't just announce that he had abandoned his whole background, his whole basis. He slandered Jeremy Corbyn in the most vile way. F. Jeremy Corbyn, he said. He's a communist. Now, I know for a certain fact that Jeremy Corbyn is not a communist. But we now know what Noel Gallagher is. He's a turncoat. He's a traitor to the working class from which he came. And as for Labour, Noel, if you're listening, and I think you are, though you didn't have the guts to show up and face me as one of your former advisers, you know this. It was Labour that put a roof over your head. A council roof. A council house built by the taxpayers at a low rent, subsidised by the taxpayers. You know, and I'm sorry to bring this up, that it was Labour that fed you free school meals every day for all of the younger days of your life. You know that there's not another Tory other than you in the whole city of Manchester. Not one single elected Tory councillor or member of parliament. You know that Manchester and the North swung to Jeremy Corbyn. You know that the working class only has two choices at the next general election. Jeremy Corbyn as the next Labour Prime Minister or the Tories continuing in power, destroying public housing, destroying public services, taking free school meals out of the mouths of children like you, degrading and depriving the poor of which you were once one, and who many of your fans who scrimp and save to buy your music desperately need a Labour government, and you just stab them, all of them, in the back. You're a disgrace, a shame to your 
Dear mother, God bless her, still living in that same council house. To your brother, Liam, to your fans, and to the great city of Manchester. And if you've got any shred of self-respect, you'll correct the slanderous attack that you launched on Jeremy Corbyn this week in the NME. Because you now know, if you didn't before, that there's open season amongst young people on Jeremy Corbyn. That's why you just heard Tory boy Dylan Jones, who wrote a book about David Cameron so slavish, so obesant, that it quickly passed to the remainder shelves. It was an embarrassment. GQ put Dylan Jones up to interview Jeremy Corbyn for the front page of GQ. And they've let it be known, don't you know, that he had to be moved around like an old grandpa at the photo shoot. They've let it be known, don't you know, that Jeremy Corbyn was dressed by Marks and Spencers. Well, there's nothing wrong with being dressed, Noel, by Marks and Spencers. Many working-class people are. And though not everyone can now dress as you do, can now drive the big car that blocked me in the last time you were at Talksport Towers, some people never lose their roots. You see, you've come to London. So have I. But I'm still the same as I was when I moved to London. I'm more Castropub than Gastropub. Do you get my drift, Noel? I haven't lost touch with where I came from, and I would never turn my back on the people that made me. But you have and I think you should hang your head in shame. Put your nose down into your champagne supernova and smell what you have become. And then there's that General Flynn. Well, I've met General Flynn in Moscow, in the Kremlin, long before Donald Trump you want to talk about General Flynn and collusion? He was doing a good deal of collusion that night, I can tell you. He fluttered around like a butterfly from table to table, from oligarch to oligarch, from Kremlin, apparatchik to apparatchik. Long before Donald Trump, he seemed to know his way around. He seemed to know where the money was. Do you get my drift? So I don't know quite what he's going to reveal about Donald Trump or quite what veracity one can ascribe to it, given that he's doing it to stay out of Alcatraz or some similar penitentiary for the rest of his natural. That's the problem with these plea bargaining deals, isn't it? It's like a super grass. How can you believe that that what they're saying is true if the possibility exists that they're only saying it to save their own skins? Not that Donald Trump needs much help in destroying his presidency. You'll have seen him this week tweeting three fake videos originally tweeted by a British fascist group that make the Ku Klux Klan look like Boy Scouts. Britain first, a paramilitary, right-wing, goose-stepping, Hitler-saluting, fascist outfit that crash into people's homes and terrorize them, crash into mosques and desecrate them whose leader is under arrest on suspicion of alleged sexual abuse 
against a young woman in the north just this week whose deputy leader is under arrest in Belfast for hate speech likely to cause a breach of the peace and even more serious harm, religious and racial hatred, like they need that in Belfast, in the north of Ireland. But not only did Trump retweet the effluent of British fascism, the videos themselves were fake news, as they have now had to acknowledge, though they have not removed the offending articles. There were three videos. The first of them showed a thug with a brown face battering a man with a white face on crutches. The video said that he was a Muslim migrant ten miles outside of Amsterdam. But as anyone could tell you, in Amsterdam, the thug was neither a migrant nor a Muslim. He was born and raised in Amsterdam. And he was not and never had been a Muslim. The other two videos showed Islamist fanatic head choppers throwing a young man off a building in one case and another Islamist desecrator destroying a statue of Our Lady Mary. The problem with those two videos is that these Islamist head choppers are America's allies in Syria in Iraq, in Libya, and elsewhere. So he was retweeting to Britain like we should do something about the conduct, bestial conduct, of people that are running around in American vehicles with American weapons and stuffed full of money from America's best friends in the Persian Gulf, Saudi Arabia, and others. So we'll be talking about Donald Trump's week in the course of the next two and a half hours or more. This is the mother of all talk shows.